Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. If you're joining us online, it's good to have you with us this morning at the Lake Havasu Church of the Nazarene. Well, before we begin this morning and before we uh, do our announcements, Diana Mann has something she would like to share. If you would come forward, Diana. Let me share with you just a, a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, one, uh, remember that this evening at 6 o'clock, there will be a Bible study with Pastor back in Morford Hall. I invite you to come and join us for that time. Uh, the announcements are mostly taken care of in your um, bulletin. If you would read carefully through there, you'll know the things that are transpiring uh, over the next few weeks. The men's Bible study is not meeting again until in January. Just thought I would mention that. Uh, if you look around, thanks to those who have decorated our sanctuary for the Christmas season. I'm not sure who all was involved, but thank you very much. Uh, Christina, I'm sure, was behind a lot of this. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you to those who, who uh, did and helped with that. Next Sunday will be the beginning of the Advent season. We will be having Advent readings each uh, Sunday as we celebrate through the Christmas season the anticipation of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you stand with us this morning as we begin? We're going to begin with, We Have Come Into His House. into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. And concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. So let Lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. And gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him. Oh, 
our offerings, our tithes back to the Lord. So if the ushers will prepare at this time, we will uh, pray for the offering and Sharon will prepare for us and present to us an offertory this morning. Father, we are so thankful, so thankful that you have for pardoned us, have forgiven our sins and cleansed us. And we joyfully bring back and give back to you a portion of what you've blessed us with. Bless this offering, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness. I think maybe the greatest hymn in the hymnal. I could quote to you every word. I won't do that, but you can look it up. But I just reminded that morning by morning, new mercies I see. Well, what a, what a great time of worship. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, that song is so meaningful to me, and I think it is to many of you, if you know those words. It is just an encouragement. Uh, the praise team is going to share with you this morning a song. It's, I was just looking. It's actually from 2019, but it's been only fairly recently that I've heard it a number of times. If you listen to Christian radio, you've heard this song. And if you choose to sing along, the words will be on the screen. Feel free to. But to me, it's an important song. It tells us that we can speak the name of Jesus over addictions, over depression, over our family. We can speak the name of Jesus, and he hears us. I speak Jesus. speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there's peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name
the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Whatever's troubling you in your life, you can speak the name of Jesus. And he brings peace. He is power. And he is healing. And he is life. We're going to prepare for our prayer time this morning. If you would stand with us and join us in singing, He Knows My Name. And I think it goes right along with that last song, knowing he knows what we need in our lives. And if you wish you can always come and pray around the altar pastor will lead us when we've concluded this song to our worship team. Let's bow in prayer. Lord Jesus, we, we bow in reverence to who you are. We bow because you are worthy. We bow because we want to close out the world and focus on you. We bow because we want to forget ourselves and cling to you. You are our rock. Where else can we stand? Lord, we pray that as we continue in this service that we will try our very best to listen to what you have for us. We have today. 
none of us know about tomorrow. And I, for one, want to receive what you have for me today. Lord, I want to thank you for the power of your word. And as we look at your word today, I pray that it will grip us. I don't want this to be just another service. I want us to be filled with your Holy Spirit in a fresh way today. So I pray you'll hide me and Lord, you'll shine in this place and that you'll be lifted up and glorified. God, I, I pray for our congregation today. We still have several that are sick, struggling, and I just pray that you will bring renewal to them and strength and healing of their body. Some are not feeling very well, but are here. And I pray for them as well. And it's not just physical. There's emotional pain. There's spiritual pain. We're complex in so many ways. And yet, Lord, we know that you're able to meet us right where we are today. So I ask in the name of Jesus that you would visit each row today. God, would you sit beside those that need someone to sit by them? To remind them that they are special, that they are unique, that they were made in the image of God. And Lord, I just want to thank you for Lake Havasu Church of the Nazarene. That way back once upon a time, you ordained it that this church would be built. It's a nice building. You've, you've blessed this place. But we are the church, not the building. And so I pray, God, you'll help us to be your people. Christmas, it's coming just around the corner. Will you help us to take your true story to others? It's a, it's a story that we shouldn't be still about. We shouldn't be quiet about. But joy should fill our heart as we share you with others. Lord, I thank you for this precious time that we can join our voices in prayer to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just got to say on a light note, I noticed you didn't sing happy birthday. You didn't say and many more because... <laughs> Because you know I probably don't have many more. <laughs> oh. Well, I know it looks beautiful and festive and Christmassy. And thank you again to, I know Christina was major involved. And I know, pardon? Patty and Joanne helped as well. So they were the three musketeers. Uh, they did a brilliant job. Um, and so, you know, Christmas has several weeks of focus, but I just felt like that, I felt drawn to, for us to look at Thanksgiving yet today. 
And um, Lloyd did not know this, but he chose a couple of songs that tied exactly perfectly with uh, this message, Possessing a Thankful Spirit in Pain. I think most of us understand how it's possible to have a thankful spirit. When life is going well, when we're in good health, when there's money in the bank, when the job is secure, when the car doesn't need any repairs, when the roof is not leaking, and when our family is doing very well. We think to ourselves, ah, it's times like these when people lift up their eyes to the Lord and to the heavens and praise the Lord with a thankful spirit. However, since the beginning of time, humans have a tendency to pat themselves on the back and feel as if that they've done a great job with life all on their own. We can become puffed up or have a false sense of security if we're not careful to keep our eyes on the Lord. Even well-meaning Christians can fall into this trap of taking gifts from God for granted. Unfortunately, some carry it even further, behaving like that they are really a great gift to God himself and that he probably can't do his job without them. Uh, this type of thinking creates a real danger zone. We are never ever to forget that we really do need the Lord every single day and that we are so very small when we think about the holy king of kings who is really running this world. Our scripture text is about this very issue. I invite you to follow along if you have your Bibles or if you want to watch, have it on the screen. Psalm 50, 1 through 15. Psalm 50, beginning in verse 1. The Lord, the Mighty One, is God, and He has spoken. He has summoned all humanity from where the sun rises to where it sets. From Mount Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines in glorious radiance. Our God approaches, and he is not silent. Fire devours everything in his way, and a great storm rages around him. He calls on the heavens above and earth below to witness the judgment of his people. Bring my faithful people to me, those who made a covenant with me by giving sacrifices. Then let the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself will be the judge. O oh, my people, listen as I speak. Here are my charges against you, O Israel. I am God, your God. I have no complaint about your sacrifices or the burnt offerings you constantly offer, but I do not need the bulls from your barns or the goats from your pens. For all the animals of the forest are mine, and I own the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird on the mountains and all the animals of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for all the world is mine and everything in it. Do I eat the meat of bulls? Do I drink the blood of goats? Make thankfulness your sacrifice to God, and keep the vows you made to the Most High. Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will give me glory. Verses 1 through 3 assures us that the entire world will pay attention when God approaches to bring his justice. None will be able to turn their face away or be able to escape. The approaching of, of our God is good news for the Christian. We long for his coming, don't we? 
The fire and storm that is spoken of in these early verses is not your typical fire and storm, but they symbolize God's indescribable power and glory. We can be sure that there is none like him in all of the earth. We can also be assured that all people experience their own day or their own kind of trouble. Sometimes it's simply because we live in a very broken, fallen world do we not see that nearly every day that we look about. Other times it is because of people's sin. Sometimes because of someone else's sin against us or sometimes because of our own sin. God calls us. He invites us into this eternal covenant relationship with himself. And if we will say yes to that invitation, his power and his glory are able to sustain us even in our greatest difficulties. Though they may not subside quickly, or perhaps not even at all in this earthly life, you and I can rest assured that God's grace, that his help, that his love and strength are ours to take hold of as we persevere in the faith. The people of Israel were doing some things right, but they were also doing some things very wrong. They were doing a great job of bringing their bulls and their goats as sacrifices to God. They had the ritual down to a T. However, the sacrificial rituals had become more important to them than serving God with the right intent of their heart. God made it clear that he didn't need their empty sacrifices and that he was not a beggar. And he was not a God that was starving for food. He declared that he and he alone made everything. He was really longing for their inward sacrifices of their hearts, their spiritual passion, their focus, their lives, their thank offerings, to be a kind of sold out people that he could call his own. He has not changed that criteria for us. He still wants the same from you and me today. Fulfilling our vows and our commitments is our obedience to God, and it still brings him glory. Let's look closer at verses 14 and 15. We can be sure that God is not saying I want you to live in a pretend world. Just ignore your brokenness, your problems, your pain, your sorrow. I really don't want to deal with it. On the contrary, that is not the God we serve. But he does say, make thankfulness your sacrifice to God and keep the vows you made to the Most High. In other words, he's saying, prove your love for me by obeying me. And be thankful people. And then he continues by inviting you and me to call on him in our day of trouble. When things are closing in on us. When our emotional, our physical, and our spiritual strength is gone. When we lose our song in a dark night. And when our heart feels like it is beyond repair. God says to us, I will be your eternal hope. I will be your forever friend. I will be the lifter of your head. You can count on me. I am your stabilizer in the chaos and the confusion. And I'm still the master over the waves of the sea in your life. How it breaks the heart of God and how it should break our hearts as well. That so many people of today are looking for empty things to hide their pain. To numb their pain and to drown their pain. If only 
if only they could stop believing the lies of this world as answers. Because those very things will increase the pain and the loneliness and the emptiness. Meanwhile, God stands ready to help us. All we have to do is call upon his name. So really, can we, can we truly possess a thankful heart to God in painful times? Is it just a cliche? Or can we really, really find praise in those times? My friends, I have good news because the answer is a resounding yes, we can. Let's identify ways that God rescues and defends us as his believers. We know that Satan is an accuser and a liar. I think we all know that, but we have to be reminded sometimes when we hear those voices that tell us things that we shouldn't even listen to. They're not from God. They are from Satan. Don't listen to them. If God and Satan were having a discussion about you, God would speak in your defense. He is a witness for his people. Just like we are a witness for him, he will stand up for you. If no one else will, God will. We desperately need to understand God is not against us. I hope we believe that because he sure would not have gone to that cross if he were against us. He is for us, my friends. No matter how difficult life gets, keep listening to the one true voice that will always, always give you truth, the voice of God. Keep walking on his path because it leads us straight home to our eternal home. What focus do we need to be thankful when we are in our pain? I want to mention just four things fairly, fairly quickly. You know them. Keep your eyes on the Lord. We call that spiritual living. If you keep your eyes on the mountain, if you keep your eyes on the problem, you're going to get discouraged and depressed. But if you keep your eyes on the Lord that hung on that cross and died for your sins and mine to give us victory and eternal life, we will know that the benefit of that is that we can worship and we can praise him. And yes, we can do it even in our pain. Scripture's full of it, but Job is a perfect example of one who did it. Second, keep doing the right things. That's called obedient living. And the benefit of that is that you're in a covenant relationship with God, and there are no barriers, at least not on his part. He's always going to be there. He will meet with you. Third, keep calling out to the Lord, and that is persistent living. The benefits is that God is always listening, and he is always working, and we've said this time and time again, but another reminder, even if you can't see it, God hasn't forgotten you, and he hasn't forgotten your need. He's orchestrating a lot of little details sometimes that we just don't know about. And fourth, keep remembering that he is for us and not against us, and that is faith living. The benefit is knowing that we are never alone. This has been one of our main themes lately around here in our prayer times on Wednesdays, on Sunday nights. There's been testimony after testimony of people saying, I know I'm not alone. Let's look at this part of keeping our eyes on God. When we see him for who he really is, we will give him adoration and thanksgiving, even 
in our pain. Have you ever praised him through your tears? I have. I imagine most of us have. Knowing that he will never turn a deaf ear to us. People often ask, well, what's the difference between adoration and, and thanksgiving to God? Adoration is praising God for who he is. And thanksgiving is praising him for what he does. Both need to be a part of a Christian lifestyle. As I have matured in Christ, I have learned how important it is to magnify and praise God in those dark tunnels of life. I'm certainly not saying that I've passed every test with flying colors, but by the grace of God, I sure have improved to where I used to be. And I completely understand the quote from Charles Spurgeon that says, I shake, but my rock moves not. May we remember that, friends. We might be shaken in our boots at the situations, the circumstances that we're in, but God isn't shaking. He's not moving. He's got it. John Newton, the converted slave trader, used to say, true thanksgiving is actually thanks living. That is, being thankful as a way of life, no matter what the circumstances are. To say it another way is that thanksgiving is to be consistent, to be continued day by day. Hebrews 13.15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Three of the greatest dangers that can occur if we are not thankful people is we develop an attitude of entitlement, a spirit of pride, and a mindset of cynicism, meaning a constant suspicion of others. This is exactly where we are in the world today. It's an epidemic. Do you, have you ever seen a time where there's such an entitlement mentality? Such a spirit of pride, haughtiness, and people so cynical. This poem by Lois Beckworth, entitled Praise, is a great condensed reflection of why we can praise God even when we are hurting. Praises to the Savior give, he who died that we might live. For his love so great, so free, praise his name eternally. When our hearts were steeped in sin, vile and wretched were within, Jesus left the throne above, came to show the Father's love. Oh, how wondrous was his grace. He who took the sinner's place, Jesus offered, lo, I come, all to bear the sinner home. Jesus died on Calvary's tree, there to set the prisoner and the sinner free. All who on his name believe, everlasting life receive. What a debt to him we owe. Gladly may our praises flow. Let our cheerful voices raise loud thanksgiving songs of praise. Praise the Father and the Son, that redemption's work is done. Magnify that precious name, Christ, the Lamb of God, who came. Worthy is the Lamb once slain. Praise and magnify his name. Laud and honor may we bring to our Savior, priest and king. Glory unto Jesus be. He who died to set us free, let us worship and adore. Praise his name forevermore. We all know how much it means on a human level to be appreciated. It doesn't mean that you're always looking for 
an applause or that you're looking for a pat on the back, but let's be honest, it's nice to be appreciated. When we reflect on all that God has done for us, and if we are ungrateful and do not give him the thankfulness and the praise that rightly should be his, we rob him of what is his. Some of you may have heard of the pastor Henry Ward Beecher. He made this profound statement. The unthankful heart discovers no mercies. But let the thankful heart sweep through the day, and as the magnet finds the iron, so it will find in every hour some heavenly blessings. The Thanksgiving holiday was celebrated just a few days ago. I hope you took some special time to just reflect, to remember, to be renewed, and certainly to respond to God with gratefulness. As we are so privileged to inhale the blessings of God to us, we should be so careful to exhale praise and adoration to him from our lips to the one whose compassions never fail and whose mercies are new every morning. Again, Psalm 50, 14 and 15, make thankfulness the sacrifice to God and keep the vows or commitments that you've made to the Most High. Then call on him when you are in your day of trouble and he will rescue you and you will bring him glory. I do realize that some people have more trials and trouble in this life than others. I don't know why. I can't explain it because I'm just not wise enough. But I do know this. Our God is a rewarder of, his, of those that are faithful to him, that obey him. And some of those rewards, as we have said before, come while we are here on earth. And some of them come when we get to our eternal home. Many of you know the story of Helen Keller, who at 19 months old was afflicted by an unknown illness. Possibly it was scarlet fever or meningitis. It left her deaf and blind. However, Helen Keller did not allow either of these to rob her of her quality of life. She said, the struggle of life is one of our greatest blessings. It makes us patient, sensitive, and godlike. It teaches us that although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of overcoming it. You may remember, but she had a teacher, Anne Sullivan, and this teacher tirelessly worked with Helen Keller she helped Helen to master finger spelling and braille. Helen learned several foreign languages, and she graduated from college with honors in 1904. Her first word to learn to speak was water. Helen Keller understood the secret of living the Christian life victoriously. Even that relates to water. She drank from God's fountain of living water every single day, even despite her challenges and her struggles. And she sure had a lot of them to overcome. Another person, you know the name, you know of her, Johnny Erickson Tata, who was a quadriplegic who, who had a diving accident many, many years ago, left her in a wheelchair. She said, my weakness, that is my quadriplegia, is my greatest asset because it forces me into the arms of Christ every single morning 
when I get up. That, my friends, is what you call getting your eyes on God and leaving them there, even when things are so very hard. May our voices echo these words of David in Psalm 92, 1 and 2. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Psalm 113, 3 says, From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. You may be going through a very difficult time right now. Maybe you're suffering in silence. And you think, ah, well, pastor, if you only knew. And I'm not looking for any kind of sympathy. I'm just sharing with you that I have been there. Our pain comes in different sizes and packages, but it still is in the category of pain. And I can tell you, when my little infant son died, I thought life was over. I didn't think I would ever have joy ever again. It seemed impossible. But only a God like ours can heal a broken heart. Through seven years of illness, when doctors said there's no hope, with a marriage that was falling apart, and later a husband who decided he wanted to leave and file for divorce. This person that was 11 years old and had been called into ministry thought, okay, well, it's over. It's over. So I'm telling you from hand-on experience, I know what it is to be at the end of your rope. I know what it's like to feel like your dreams have been smashed upon the rocks and disintegrated. But I'm telling you, God, our God, can do anything. And so if you have an impossibility today, hold on. Please hold on. Because God has not forgotten you. He has seen your tears. He has heard your cries, and he's heard your prayers. And if you will keep your eyes on him, he will walk every single step with you. I'm not saying every step will be easy, but he will walk with you. Sometimes things come into our life, and it blocks the praise. It blocks the thanksgiving. It's not always sin. It can be. But maybe today you've got something that is blocking your praise, and you know it. And you need to give it to God. These altars are a great place to come and do business with God. Maybe you just want to praise him today for something that you have been praying for and you've gotten victory. You've seen him at working to bring it to your life. I don't know if I have time to tell this, but I'm going to take a couple of minutes. I'll make it short. When I was a little girl, uh, my grandparents lived right up the road from me, and I used to go there often. It was on a farm, lots of woods. I loved those woods. We weren't allowed when we were little to go back in those woods by ourselves. But Grandpa, he knew I loved those woods. And even if I was the only grandchild that wanted to go, he would take me. I remember one day when I really wanted to go into the woods. And so Grandpa said, sure, we'll go. And it had, it had rained, so it was wet and a little bit muddy. Um, but we went off into the woods. 
And the woods had a little area that was like a little branch. And I loved that little branch. It was so much fun to play in, get wet, just, uh, just, just have fun. And so we were walking along the path and uh, we noticed that the branch, it, there wasn't any water flowing. And I said, Grandpa, what's wrong with the branch? And he said, oh, he said, it's blocked somewhere. So we followed along and we found where that branch was blocked. Because of the rain and all the leaves that had fallen in the fall, it had stopped it all up. So Grandpa got down there and moved all those leaves and those branches and everything out of the way, and all oh, that water just started flowing. And uh, as a kid, that impacted me. And Grandpa said to me that day, wise, wise words that I've never forgotten. Cindy, life is a lot like what you've just seen with this branch. Things stop up our lives. Grandpa was a deep, committed Christian. He hadn't been brought up in a Christian home. But he met my grandma, and she was a born-again, on-fire-for-God Christian. Grandpa started going to church with her. And before you know it, Grandpa got saved, and he got baptized, and they got married. And they've left such a legacy of faith for me, and I'm so forever grateful. But Grandpa knew in his wisdom that day to teach me by something very visual, to say our branch can get stopped up. In other words, our life can get clogged. But I want to tell you, we have a Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to unclog the things in your life so that everything is flowing as it should be. Maybe, just maybe, somebody needs to talk to God about that today. Today's the day. Let the, let the water flow again the way it's supposed to. God's ready. He'll hear your prayer. He'll be so faithful to meet your need. Let's bow in prayer. Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you that you have taught us by your word. You have taught us by your spirit that when we are weak, you are strong. And if we will invite you into the situation, the circumstances, the complexities of our life, you will make a way. You know how to remove the deadness, the pain, the anger, the confusion. Whatever's blocking our lives from being all that we need to be, God, we want to surrender that to you. We want to give it to you today. And whether it's somebody doing so from their seat or from this altar, Lord, I pray for victory in the house today. I pray, God, that you'll do something only you can do in our lives. Oh, God, we, we don't want to stay clogged and, and away from all that you have for us. We want there to be praise on our lips, even if we don't understand what you're doing, even in the pain. I'm sure many could give testimony today of times that through their tears, through their agony, that they have found a way to still praise you because you are God and we trust in the name of our Lord. God, I just want to thank you for your Holy Spirit, for the work that you're doing. 
thank you, God, that you will help us to keep our promises, to keep our vows, to keep our commitments. Forgive us for the times, Lord, that we fall short. We come back to you today and we say, oh, God, we want to be faithful in every way. Help us, oh, God, to be faithful in every season of our life when it's good, when it's difficult, when we don't know anything about what is ahead, that you have our future. And we're going to trust you, Lord. We're going to trust you. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. I'm going to ask that our worship team will come at this time. Pastor, thank you for being vulnerable and transparent and sharing what a truth that, uh, that we can be thankful even in our pain because he does see us through. Um, I've chosen to close this morning with another psalm. This one is Psalm 34, where the psalmist cried out in his distress, God heard him. Would you stand with us? We're going to close this morning with Psalm 34. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from every fear. Those who look on him are radiant. They'll never be ashamed, they'll never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds his saints, he will deliver them, he will deliver them. So magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Is he who hides in him? Oh, fear the Lord. Oh, all you saints, he'll give you everything. He'll give you everything. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. the Lord every day and night never ending praise may our incense rise let us bless the Lord every day and night never ending praise may our incense rise let us bless the Lord every day and night never ending praise Every day and night, never ending praise. May our incense rise, magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together.
exalt the Lord this week. You are dismissed. Come and join us this evening for our Bible study. Go in the grace of the Lord this morning. I magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together and glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Oh